Hey kids, it's time to get some SML podcast all up in that. So, this will be the very first SML IKEA cast. IKEA cast. Oh my god. Um so it's where... going to be half-assed and you can't figure out the rest of it. Zonatron is I, I use that from a. Uh, I always used to use Megatron, what? back before gaming IDs were online, like on, on the original Xbox. So uh, I used, so I couldn't use Megatron, of course, because it was taken once it was an online account. Yeah. And then Zona is actually a pre, an SI prefix like Mega, so Mega Giga whatever. Ah. And it actually doesn't exist yet, but it was proposed to be the next proposed, like it was the next proposed extension to the system, like the SI scientific prefixes was Zona. That's where we got our name from. So I just, uh, Mega Zonatron, whatever. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Dude, we're, we're learning shit on this show. Oh, and we, yeah. we didn't even it's, start yet and we're learning shit. We yeah. get educational. <laughs> But yeah, I saw uh, Zona Games retweeted us, Zona Tech, and then just Zona. Yeah, I have a bunch of accounts, and mostly just Zona. Zona Games was originally a subsection of Zona Tech, or Zona.com. So I had some other accounts, and uh, whatever. It just became the only thing that we did, so now it's just Zona Games. That's why our, our .com is actually just Zona.com. Ah. But we, you know, instead of Zona Game, and Zona dot com slash games is just one subsection at, at a point. I feel like this is a lot of conversation we should be having on the yeah. show. So we <laughs> probably. we should probably just start it. Yeah. So <laughs> okay, sure. Let's start what's it. up, everyone? This is Joe. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. How about that new intro? I, f- I forgot about the new intro. I'm, <laughs> dude, I'm I'm dealing with seven cats in one house. Give me a break. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Speaking of seven, this is the SML podcast episode number one ninety seven. Uh, hey. I am I am your host Joe, joined by Mr. Chris Huber as always. Hello. Uh, once again, we have our friend Rez joining us for the proceedings. Hello. And we have a special guest joining us from Zona Games, Matthew. I'm going to butcher your your last name, so I'm not even going to try it. Matthew, how are you doing? Uh, Matthew Doucette. I'm um, good. Set. Thanks. We get so many crazy last names on this show that I I don't even try them anymore. And first names for that or for the matter. Yeah, Matthew's yeah, right. such a weird one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a curveball. I wasn't ready for that one. <laughs> I was expecting like I don't know Zoltan. <laughs> Are you on an Adam Sandler kick or something, Chris? No, no. <laughs> It's on an IKEA. I was actually, you know what? Here, here. This is actually gonna hurt my case more, but I'll say it anyway. Um, I was thinking, dude, where's my car? <laughs> oh God! Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, are you on a Kutcher kick or a Sean William <sighs> Scott kick? Uh, neither. <laughs> he just needs to be kicked. Yeah. Yeah. Probably something, something like that. So, Matthew, how are you doing today, sir? <laughs> oh, I'm good. How are you guys? <laughs> we are all insane. <laughs> I am. I am building IKEA furniture. I'm. I'm what excited is- about this. Is the first show in months that Chris has not been in the room next to me for the recording. Uh, mm. yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of strange, it's kind of weird. So um, I, I get to do the episode in my underwear tonight. <sighs> kind of strange, kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I wasn't ready for that, but I should probably expect it. Feels good, man. Feels good. Just get feels good. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. Matthew, uh, <laughs> you are a member of Zona Games, and you just released the game Score Rush Extended on the PlayStation last week, which we reviewed on this show. And uh, you enjoyed our review so much that we convinced you to come on for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so, for the people who didn't listen to the show last week or, or don't know what the game is, give us the sales pitch on Score Rush Extended. Tell us what the game is and why people should care about it. Okay, the the quick pitch is 
it score rush the original game was a number one in japan game and that's uh in terms of uh user ratings and best selling on the xbox 360 on the indie games channel so that's uh that's the quick pitch to get someone interested what the game actually is is a shoot 'em up uh we you i guess you could call it a bullet hell shoot 'em up um Four player bullet hell shoot them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that and that's the that thing that I'm place. already like really interested with the game. It's just like it, you keep adding all these extra layers onto it, so it's not like it's not just another bullet hell. Mm. It is. Uh, I could say, you know, I thought about a lot of this stuff when we were putting out our press release, you know, for the PlayStation Four release of this uh, sequel to it. It's kind of like. It, it's it's not a sequel in the sense that we didn't call it Score Rush Two, but it's an it's uh that's why it's called Score Rush Extended. It's it's almost like a more full release. Our games before never really fully felt they never felt complete, and that was partially because of the platform we released on. If you guys remember, the Xbox 360, the Indie Game Channel didn't have like achievements and yeah. all the leaderboards. Yeah. You know, uh, it just felt like I don't even want to rip on. Xbox Live mini games because that's how I got my foot in the door, so to speak. Uh, you know, all these accolades that we that we've gained through Zona Games has been because of our releases on that channel. So the opportunities that you know that lay before us on these next generation consoles were born out of that. So so it is what it is, you know. And we finally, it's like we felt now this is like a proper full release. It's on PlayStation Four. So it has trophies and the scoreboard system, and we made use of like the dual shot controller, uh, various things with that. You know, like it lights up the color of your ship. So even if you don't know who's blue, let's say you just look at the controller, you can see who's blue, um, and whatever the sound effects just for you come out of the controller and stuff. So anyway, uh, it's it's a complete game. So that's the biggest thing for us is that this game is a complete game, and we don't have to sell it for like. The Xbox Live Indie Games channel was a race to the bottom. Uh, games yeah, that, that turned into a shit show pretty quickly. Yeah. It was yeah. a wild west, big time. And Interesting. It was made up I, mainly of massage simulators. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, what survives in a wild west? It's just, it was just chaos, that channel. It wasn't really, it, it was an unregulated, it was regulated. There were regulations for it, but I mean, it was there's only like four real rules where your game would fail. Uh, I don't know how many reviewers even really knew that. It was is basically just wide open. So um, I don't yeah, even know what. There were I definitely mean, some gems in the in the indie section on Xbox, but there was a lot of, of just a hot garbage everywhere. Mm-hmm. So it's it's good to see that there were some good games hiding amongst the corpses of hatred and sadness <laughs> diamonds yeah. amongst the corpses yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we our games did well all of them all of them did well in japan we released three of them on the xbox live uh any games channel and they all ranked number one in japan on, upon release that's and, pretty awesome yeah and then the user ratings uh it, we they were we were bumping each other we were bumping our own games down and <laughs> two other <laughs> Two other games got in the mix. <laughs> so when it was all said and done, we held three of the top five spots in Japan. It was all, it was the only three games we released. Holy that's shit. Insane. Damn. Cool. Yeah. So, so that became our claim to fame. That's, that's what interested people in our company. Well, uh, I, I would assume so. <laughs> like, that's, like, you want to talk about a freaking flooded market and you guys are at the top. Like, that's, that, that's really impressive to me. Yeah. It was, it was cool. Hey, the cream rises to the top. Gross. <laughs> Damn you it. liked it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so those were the decimation games, and then you also released Score Rush on the indie title or on the Xbox indie. What made you go with PlayStation Four or Score Rush Extend? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let me think. So. Rewind back to 2013. Good year. At the beginning of this year, I was trying to figure out what we should do. 
Uh, and at the beginning of that year, a lot of things started dying. And this, at the end of that year is when Xbox One and PlayStation 4 were coming out. But the effects of those consoles being released at the end of the year were already having effects on 360 and the PlayStation 3 at the beginning of the year. So you can imagine, like, people aren't as apt to buy games for, let's say, let's say on an Xbox Live Arcade when they know the Xbox One is coming out and they know they're going to get it. So, right. in a sense, people's kind of save up. They stop buying games. They're going to save up, buy the con- new console. And also, Microsoft killed the uh, their XNA, C-Sharp XNA. Well, I should say XNA, uh, which was the tools we were using to develop these games. And basically, we already knew that the support had stopped probably two years before that, but they, that it officially was over with. Uh, at the beginning of 2013, and we just didn't know what to do. Uh, I, I, XNA and C Sharp. C Sharp is a, a a very nice language to code in. XNA, the the game framework that Microsoft made built that built upon C Sharp, is one of the best frameworks for making games. Like where for uh, when you're starting from scratch, like it doesn't have an engine already pre built. You have to code. So, so our games like we're coding our own engine in it. Uh, so it's perfect. It's actually, it's, it's so, without it going into details, it's one of my favorite ways to make games. Um, and so we didn't know what to do. And then, but I guess I did know what to do. I knew I had to get onto the next generation platforms. I didn't know if there's going to be another indie section because that was going really bad for Microsoft and the 360. I just didn't know what was going to happen. And so I thought, I just got to, I got to try to land these platforms. So actually, officially, it would have been like what I would have had to do on the 360 had there not been an indie channel. I would have had to get them to accept my company's zone of games and my games, you know, you know, go into contracts and all this stuff. That's all the stuff we didn't have to do on the indie game channel for the 360. Yeah. Uh, so we did. Uh, by the end of that year, we got onto Xbox One. We were an official developer and publisher on that system. And shortly after, we were an official developer and publisher on PlayStation 4. So to answer your question, why did I choose PlayStation 4 then? It's because XNA was not, and C Sharp was not supported on the Xbox One. And it was supported on the PlayStation 4. That's the, there's other, you could say there's other reasons, but the main reason is my games would run on a PlayStation 4 and they wouldn't run on an Xbox One. Interesting. Yeah. Especially considering it's Microsoft code. Yeah, that is really weird. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can explain why that is too if you guys really want to go into it. Sure, Absolutely. fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> the the reality is is there's a project called Mono or now Mono Game and it's a cross-platform implementation of C# Sharp XNA. So my my C# Sharp XNA code is not running natively on the PlayStation 4. It's actually running through, I'm just like simplifying this a little bit, running through the mono game technology, which allows, which makes it run on the PlayStation 4. Uh, and what happened was PlayStation was Sony wanted some game, some popular game that was written in C sharp and XNA. They didn't know what, what it was written in. They just wanted the game. They approached the developer and basically asked, what can we do for you to get your game to come to our new platform? Like, and Sony has done this for, with other developers. It's pretty cool. And they said, uh, support XNA if you can. And, and m- this mono game technology was already known to have, uh, you know, to allow the code to run on other platforms, like even on iOS and whatever and other, other platforms. So Sony basically created a mono game port or whatever you would call that for the PlayStation 4. More mono game build, I should say, for the PlayStation 4, and then letting this person's XNA game run there, and in so by doing so, it let everybody else's XNA games run there too. So it's very yeah. cool that they did that. So essentially, mono game is an instruction translator. Yeah, I guess. Like, <laughs> Rez is the so. computer kinda, guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm the PC guy of this bunch, so mm. yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> right. Yeah, I haven't really. I haven't. The only programming that I did was I had a a really very basic programming class in high school, which I attempted to try and do like a an RPG in and failed horribly. (laughs) (laughs) 
Especially because I, I don't even play that many RPG. Like, the only RPG that I had to go off of was, like, Pokemon. So, because I'm just not a... Why I'm the, just not an RPG guy. Like a, like a traditional RPG guy. Why the fuck would you make an RPG if you don't play RPGs? <laughs> um, because all of the, like, all of the coding and all of the, uh, like, the calculations and stuff didn't have to be done in real time. So it was easier for me to program. You're ridiculous. I, I mean, that's literally the only reason why I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I call that slack coding myself. <laughs> Yeah, I was just like, I I don't want to, I don't want to try and, uh, I don't want to have to try and think of how to do all of this stuff in my coding at the same time. I'm just gonna have it do this thing and then do the next thing and then do the next thing and do the next thing. And, and learning's and, dumb. I'll take the easy way out. Well, and he, and here was here was the first problem that I had with coding my game that way is because because I had to go through all of these different checks and balances. It was the slowest running game, in, <laughs> like the fucking history of the universe. <laughs> like, it was just like, like, I, I, you, I'm going to move th- through this door. Like, like, even just movement was turn-based. So, like, I'm going to, oh. I'm going to move through this door. And, and, and then I'm going to move another space. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I'm going to move another space. <laughs> oh, wait. There's an enemy here. Let's identify the enemy. What was his code? Uh, well, uh, what was it? it was, uh, Basic, true basic. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this, this yeah. sounds a lot like uh, the closest I ever got to programming anything was in high school. All the cool kids had TI eighty threes or TI eighty three plus. Oh Jesus! I had like a shitty olive green Casio. I think it was a Casio calculator, but it was it was a full on graphing calculator, and people could program their own games, and I. Just I dicked around enough to kind of learn how to get like a, a decent text based program going on. So I had kind of mm-hmm. like a choose your own adventure open world style South Park text RPG. <laughs> and it was licensing it, issues. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I couldn't share it. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I also, I also couldn't share it because no one else had that kind of fucking calculator. But yeah. Oh, you have to have this one to play it? Can I just play it on yours? I was the TI-83 software pimp back in high school. I don't yeah. doubt it. Got all of their games for me. I'm yeah. guessing you're the one it's who like, would oh, program. Super Mario Land? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing you would program like the naked girl screensavers on TI-83s. Or no, I was actually helping with my friends. We were making this um, game called Kleptomaniacs. <laughs> It was an RPG, and it it was fully featured. It actually had a party system and stuff on the TI eighty three. So interesting. There's like no RAM on those things. No, there's not. So what I have learned is that three of the four people on this show right now have created RPGs, except for the actual game designer. So <laughs> when's when Score Rush RPG uh, coming out? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, score score rush tactics. When does that come out? <laughs> well, that would be interesting to make a a real time RPG with the score rush. You know, like a shoot 'em up the RPG. Engine? That'd, That'd be, be cool. sweet, man. That'd be yeah. amazing. When the world has not seen enough shooter RPGs. I I agree. <laughs> what was the one? Dude, Sigma Star out, Saga man. on on was a Game Boy Advance. Oh, God. I have no idea. I think it was called Sigma Star Saga. It was a side-scrolling shooter RPG. And it was fucking awesome. Interesting. I would love to actually try and find that. Here's your homework, kids. Track down Sigma Star Saga. (laughs) Sigma Star Saga. God knows you're going to need an emulator for that one. (laughs) Jesus. Or a game store that deals in hard-to-find Game Boy Advance game. Repros, maybe? Maybe. But anyway, uh, back to the to the actual game that we're talking about. Back on track yet again. <laughs> Didn't Microsoft announce that Mono Game is coming to the Xbox One? Yes. So, so does, does that does mean, that mean we could see Score Rush Extended coming to Xbox I One? Could, I could mean that. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, allegedly, about, allegedly. Let's get to the point here. How about Steam? <laughs> um, yeah, you guys were wondering. I could probably answer those questions too. The 
Why wouldn't you ever put a game on Steam? Yeah, <laughs> I want do. I want to know. I li- like because it just seems like every indie developer that we ever talk to, they're just like, well, yeah, of course we're gonna put it on Steam. Like it's just. Right. I mean, I so yeah, I, I absolutely want to hear where you're at on this. Okay, so with with promising releases on other platforms, I don't really make. I made an early mistake making promises back when we first started zoning games, uh, one that we couldn't keep and. It was bad. It was bad. It was right in the, the promise was not only something we had said, it was right in the game itself. Like we released the game, then the game itself promised extra features were going to come to the game that we never ended up coding. And I was like, that oh. stung us for so many years. And the reason we never, we wanted to add this extra feature, whatever it was, but business just takes like life and business and, other things need to be done to survive and whatever else. And it just was never a high priority. What was the uh, feature, if you don't mind us asking? It was, uh, we were going to hack our own online leaderboard system for the, our first game on the, on the Xbox Live Any Games. Ah. <clears throat> so what it was going to do was there is no online leaderboard. So there's no actual place to post your score to any server. There's no servers. But the game, even though it wasn't online multiplayer, uh, it doesn't matter. Like when you like when you choose to play an online. Let's say there's a game that you're playing. And you choose online multiplayer. Like ultimately, yeah, you're pressing buttons on a controller and you're telling the game to do this and that. But ultimately, it's just some code that's actually running that's making the connection to your friends and whoever else. The code could just do that on its own. It doesn't need your permission to do it. If you follow where I'm going with this, yeah. So what we're okay. Is just connect to you and anybody else. Doesn't matter if it was somebody in a lobby. There was no lobby. Just connect to anybody else on whatever online server that Microsoft would 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 have you connecting to. Because they're probably everybody's probably not on the same server. But I'm not sure. I'm not even sure how that works. But so we just connect to anybody else at all that was playing our game, and then the the so-called I'm using air quotes here online game would be in the background sharing scores back and forth so all my scores you get all your scores i get and then it spreads like a virus like virally through wow that's so crazy like a glorified peer-to-peer network you piggybacking off microsoft's own service right it's a score (laughs) virus that is awesome (laughs) yeah and we were losing points on some somebody would rate us four out of five star on like score rush or decimation x3 uh, some big, bigger site, not really big sites, but big indie sites, let's say. And they're saying, yeah, we're taking out these, that extra point because there's no, on- like, because the game needs online scoreboards. It doesn't have it. They're like, come on. Like, if you knew the system doesn't even have it for us, like, we have to actually hack that stuff in. So, but we heard the voices of the audience, like, asking for this stuff way before we even released the game. So we, we had planned on doing it, but it would have been, it was just too much, honestly. It was just a little bit too much. So, yeah, uh, that was our, so I mean, uh, did you did you avoid the the Steam release just to kind of like k- like keep some uh, of the potential backlash down in case like oh no. that? The to connect all this with Steam, I was just getting out how well, I don't make promises. So I, I'm not promising my games come to other platforms. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't make promises anymore, basically, because you never know if you can. Let's just say on this podcast, I promise. That we're getting an Xbox One and a Steam release. Sure, I would like to do those things. Uh, you know, I would love for everybody to have this game on. I would like everybody to have this game, right? That's right. As a developer, I want that. But right now, what's happening is this PlayStation 4 release has to go well. So I'm just focusing on that. Like, I wouldn't want a single gamer to not buy it on PlayStation 4, waiting for a release that depends on the PlayStation 4 release going well. Yeah. Right. Makes That's sense. where I'm at with yeah. this. Well, we we definitely gave a good marks on our show, so yeah. we're doing our part. Yeah, you to, are. To try and get the word out, yeah. including saying fuck a lot of times in yeah. your in your selected <laughs> yeah, quotes for our show. <laughs> like yeah. the thing that draws draws it to me like I am not a fan of bullet hell shooters like of this type. The thing that makes me want to play this game so bad is this tiny little defined hitbox. Yeah. Just having that clear indicator it makes me want to play that game. Right. Cuz that's my biggest complaint with all those types of games is me too. there's no easy to find area that you should be watching. 
And that that's why I can't get into them. Right. Or if there is, it's like the size of a pinpoint and you still can't see it. Yeah. Yeah, there's no, it's impossible. But look no, I, looks I like our uh, our chat in Twitch uh, has someone interested in the Steam version as well. So yeah. there's three people who want it on Steam. <laughs> <laughs> that right there makes the cost of the port job completely worth it, I think. If I'm doing the <laughs> math right. Well, the reason uh, there's more like so place okay so why isn't this game out on steam well i could say well maybe it is coming so maybe i'm not i don't need excuses but there is a reason why it didn't come on steam first all this stuff i'm actually an official i'm actually an official publisher and developer on like zona games i'm not trying to it's not a brag thing i'm just saying zona games has the ability to publish and release games on playstation 4 on xbox one but not on steam and i know there's a steam green light steam green light's not is is cool, but it, it feels a little bit like the uh, a little bit a morph in between consoles and that old Xbox Live any games thing where everybody just gets on. So there's this. Uh, I was just kind of going to the places that you know it's almost like the higher tier, and I'm not saying Steam. I'm not saying like these like Steam won't outsell Xbox or whatever. Like Steam probably has way more players than Xbox One and, and PlayStation Four put together. You know, but so I was just hitting the, the, I was hitting the marketplaces that were, you know, that I was allowed onto and not everybody's allowed on these places and it just felt worthwhile. Uh, and I always knew that I could do a Steam release after the fact. I'm sure Steam would accept me and s- accept Zona games once it's done a PlayStation 4 game or Xbox One. So that's how the thinking was going there. Uh, you know what I mean? Like it's almost like you, you almost have more street credit with a ps4 release than you do with a steam release yeah because it seems everyone could get a game on steam yeah yeah Yeah, that is true now it's uh i don't want my i I really my my most difficult task is really making people respect the game i'm sure everybody has this problem who makes games having people respect the game for what it really is uh that's what i run with the number one japan thing a lot it's kind of our claim to fame i i just try to I, I try to distinguish it from just any other shoot 'em up. Not every shoot 'em up's good. Like I love shooters a lot, but I didn't want to come off as oh, this is just another like shooter, which probably isn't that good. I, I wanted to avoid all of that, so I don't know. I don't even know if I'm doing it right. See what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> try, try, I don't even all know. All you have to do is try, and you're yeah. trying. That's what's important. <laughs> Someone uh, wrote, "I'd rather stab my eyes out than get a PS4." I, yeah. I was, I was just going to mention that one. Uh, <laughs> Vic, Vicky that Greenwood probably... is after the hearts of all of us on SML. <laughs> yeah, that's I, yeah, I, my friend from Germany. Yeah, nice. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm just not. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to have a PS4. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the PS4. Actually, it's a great system, and that's well, not the, because uh, my the game controller. Works. The controller, especially playing your game. The controller alone makes me just fucking hate that system. <laughs> like, just, like those thumbsticks, man. Like, oh, I fucking. But you know what? Off. I thought I was not going to like it either. And when I first picked it up, and I'm used to Xbox 360 and Xbox One, but I've played my game a lot on a PlayStation 4 now, like through the development and all this, and it's smooth. Like the thumb. Yeah, I actually, I, I I even prefer the PS3 thumbsticks more yeah. than the oh, PS4 really? ones. Yeah, because it's just even though they're they're um, convex, it's completely rounded off. Like with the PS4 one, because there's that little like ring that goes around and, and all that, that shitty like, belly just, button, Audi yeah, belly just, button. It, it doesn't nub. like when you go to push the stick in one direction. There's not enough real estate for your thumb to kind of like roll off of. I guess is the best way that I can try and describe it. Like it's, mm. it, it. I don't know. It's it's just a feel thing. Like you kind of you kind of feel like your thumb is on the edge of a ring, all the time, as opposed to just on a tactile thing. That's yeah. No, it's strange. I don't have that issue when I play on it. Uh, the whole like maybe slipping off. Oh, dude! Yeah, it, like there were, I would say the majority of the times. Um, that I got really frustrated is when like I was, I was trying to make like a very delicate maneuver and my thumbstick, like my thumb would just slip 
and 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 I would hit something, and I'm just like, well, uh, there goes that. Like, yeah, I I had to continually readjust my thumb on that game, and then the higher difficulties, when there's a hundred thousand bullets coming at you, you don't have the time to let go of that thumbstick for even a fraction of a second to readjust. That's so. weird. Yeah, I never. D- when I play, one thing I noticed that I do differently, and let's just say, like that, I have more experience, so I play. I do something differently than the first time gamers, whatever that might be. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing I do notice from watching footage is that I dance with the con- with the character more. So even if I'm even if I don't have to be moving, uh, I won't move fast, but I'll move around in little like circles or little like infinite loops or something. I'm always dancing, like, and it's almost uh, I don't know. I'm thinking about this just right now. I think it's almost like a warm up. Like, I'm, I'm getting used to doing delicate movements when I don't even have to. So then when they do come up, that precision is there waiting for me because I'm warmed up to it. Are you a figure mm-hmm. eight dancer? No. Because <laughs> okay, when, when I'm keeping my character moving around, I'm usually going in like the sideways figure eight infinity symbol. Oh, yeah. So I do, I do. I can't. You know, I'm just trying to think. I'd have to watch some footage of me to really see what it is I do. I, I do the but, same thing. I just eat. Just sitting in one spot doesn't feel right. And also when you have the options, so all the tailing, the trailing options that you collect over time, if you kind of do little circles, you you make them coalesce like all in one little spot. Yeah, uh, I noticed so, that. Yeah. Right. That so was one of the first things to- that, I know, that I mentioned to Joe because I was like, well, with these boss battles, you got to get every single bullet in. Mm. Yeah, so you see you're getting the point. You're right there. That's the point of Score Rush is to kill like why would you want to get all those things in the boss battle like does it matter to kill it a little bit faster a lot of games it doesn't matter you get the 100,000 points whether you kill it in you know so many seconds or not but in score rush the only scoring mechanic in this entire game is the speed of kill and because why it's because it's the only thing that that matters like you, we could add all kinds of stuff. We could add pickup things. We could give you points for picking up icons. We give you points for having extra lives if you beat the game or extra bombs. We thought, or we could even have tricks that you could do. Some some shoot 'em ups have tricks. I don't, I don't know how much you guys are into shoot 'em ups, but some pretty dominant shoot 'em ups have tricks where if you don't shoot certain enemies, you let them live, which is really hard because you're just shooting so many bullets. It's hard to mm-hmm. actually. So they reverse it on you, try to keep this one tank alive or something like that, and let it drive around. All of a sudden, then it hits like a box and a one up pops out or something like that. And I'm, yeah. I'm thinking of right, riding right now, but mm-hmm. um, so I was like, oh, I don't want any tricks, no tricks. Just I want to see the person perform at their best. And if you perform better than the next person, you get the higher score. And, and I wanted the scoring mechanic to respect domination itself. I remembered when I would play shoot 'em up games, uh, like I was a big fan of the Thunder Force series and the Raiden series. Some people say Raiden. I love Raiden. Yeah, and uh, there's certain enemy, there's certain bosses that you can kill in Thunder Force before it even finishes scrolling on the screen. Like if you know what you're doing, and it's awesome to see a game get dominated. But I realized I was just getting the same points as anybody else. Like it didn't matter that I was dominating it. So Square Rush was an experiment that's what it was experiment in purity just get rid of all the everything in this bonus all the only thing you're actually doing is dodging and aiming that's how good can you do those two things and i want to measure how good you are at doing those two things so if you well, can aim plus better, being being like cognitive of of the little like uh what were they the controls is that what they're called mm, the little orb the options that follow you? Uh, options options um, yeah yeah, so like even just having those and and being able to concentrate them in and, and making sure you don't lose them because like that was one thing Joe and I realized when we were playing it is like if if you die and you lose some of those like you're good fucked luck <laughs> trying to keep up keep up like your run is over. Mm-hmm. It's we they call that the Gradius effect. You get all powered up and you die and you feel like you can't continue. Scorch has a tiny bit of that, but you actually. You're more powerful than you think when you don't have anything, but but I do understand you really don't feel all that powerful if you just were, you know, you basically lose half of your main main shot and you lose all of your options every time you die. 
Yeah, it's so brutal. Can, yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> but it's not. It's not. It's still doable. I think there's only one place in the game, maybe, that you can't survive if you die and die and die. Like you just lose if you try to lose the most amount of power ups possible and still be alive. Eighth stage boss. It's right before the final boss, but. But in that moment, I gave, the game has gives like a ton of power ups. So you, it gives you a chance to get through it, even if you happen to not have anything. Yeah. But, I, I got through the section where it was just power up after power up after power up. Right. And then I died for the first time. Okay. And then I was just, I fucked completely yeah. and utterly fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that yeah, and that's the thing too, because because the, the 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 there's so many bullets on screen that like I, I, you know for some of the people that are uh, <laughs> listening in that weren't listening in last week, um, when you reach full power and then you pick up a power up, it will like set off a small bomb to to take out a bunch of the bullets that are surrounding you. So when you lose like a bunch of your power and then you, you, there's just you're surrounded by bullets and your instinct goes, oh, pick up the power up, you'll clear some out. <laughs> <laughs> that and doesn't happen like, oh, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's, it's cool. rough. It's, an, it's a neat. It's a neat concept, and I, I love that it's in there. But like, man, is it frustrating? <laughs> As like just like a, a just a, a pleb that's just not good at like these. Like I enjoy them. I love bullet hell games, but I am not like I am not a bullet hell champion. Right. So, but it's- at least I will say that this game. This game has those types of things, like like um, Rez was saying, having that clear hitbox yeah. is the big thing for me, because like that was the main reason why. Like the only other one that I ever really liked was was uh, Raiden, um, but even then there was a plenty of times where like I felt like oh I shouldn't have gotten hit. Like mm-hmm. so, so at least this it's like I love that that's there. I love you that can't use there. that excuse anymore. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, then again, when there's that many bullets on the screen, it's it's kind of fifty fifty on whether you're going to be <laughs> like, "Oh my god, I can't believe I got hit," and "Oh my god, how did I not get hit?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There were a couple times that I felt like that. <laughs> where I, I think yeah. everybody who plays it has definitely has a moment where they think they can't do it, and then they realize it's not as hard, they, and they feel empowered. So the the philosophy behind this game is. Uh, Two step. One is that whole purity, like it's just a pure game. There's no, there's no nonsense with it. There's no like bonus points, all that stuff. But the next step mm-hmm. is like, um, oh, where was I going with that? The next, the next step <laughs> is the philosophy. Yeah, the philosophy, like the empowerment of the player. That's where I was going with that. It was, uh, you should feel powerful when you play this game. Uh, ultimately, games like this, if you don't beat it, you, you are overpowered and you, and you, and you get destroyed. But, so it's a progress. So let's say somebody, some people will die before they can beat the first two bosses, let's say. Um, but if they just play one or two more times, it's actually kind of designed that all, everybody will eventually get through the first two bosses. Like it's actually not that hard once they calm down and just chill out and realize what's mm-hmm. going on. Uh, and then they'll beat something that was beating them, uh, and they're empowered by it. So it's like, uh, they can do something they couldn't do before. And that's, that's the effect that we're hoping to have when people play it like multiple this, times. This game will not hold your hand. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it will not. <laughs> It'll smack it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Bad. Stop it. <laughs> cool to see you guys play, actually. <laughs> were, were you guys going to play? Or this is just a podcast. It's not like oh uh, yeah, this this is oh, just yeah, just a pod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, be cool. Joe, you're not you're not set up to to be able to do that yet, are you? I I could possibly stream from the PlayStation to the PC. No, well, I'd be. But that with would, your that, computer, yeah, like, yeah, it might catch fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, like we th- this is we're not a real show at all. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we are a real show. We just don't have the real equipment yet. That's all. <laughs> I I like not being a real show. I like being our <laughs> our fuck around little goofball show. Well, that's just our character. That's yeah. All. And hey, developers sing, seem to like our charm. So <laughs> yeah, charm. The, the more quote, people quote. like Matthew that we could sucker into being on our show, the more legitimate we come across. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
That was good. I like it. Yeah. Hey, hey, we got you on, so it's working. <laughs> well, I like I like just reality, I guess. Well, <laughs> he's just like, man, what did I sign up for? Like, what the fuck? Why am I wasting my time with these idiots? Oh, he should have known when he used three of our quotes and they all had fuck in it. Yeah. Fuck you. Get is- good. <laughs> I know it's true. It's like, it is true, though, it, yeah. and and I think even even though we obviously like you know we'll we'll say these types of things, but we, I think they're valid critiques, and I think it's it, like you know I I think it's definitely one of those games that you know if if certain people are going into it not knowing what to expect, like that's a pretty accurate representation because <laughs> like, <laughs> you you do need to know at least a little bit of what you're doing in this game, or you will get stomped. Yeah. It's funny because in the end, it's just really so. The fact that it's a bullet hell is not something we we didn't decide to make a bullet hell. What we decided to do was see how just how good are you guys? How good are you at the most fundamental gameplay possible? Which is like, you know, shoot 'em ups or, be, or even or were before like platformers. It's it's almost like back to. I suppose the original game would have been Pong, but like, like Space Invaders would have, would have uh, been the first shoot 'em up game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yep. just moving and aim, like dodging and aiming. So don't get hit, but also aim back. Uh, and that's it. That's why the design, uh, so basically we have that and the enemies shoot bullets at you, but every bullet actually moves the same. It might be a different color, but they all move the same speed. There's not, and a game like Raiden will have, they actually have like two different types of bullets. Some move faster, some move sh- slower. Uh, so it, it gets your mind used to a certain speed and a certain reaction time, and then it screws with you, throws out like something way quicker during a boss fight or something. Uh, we decided not to do any of that stuff because we, well, we wanted the, the purity of this game was to test. Like, yeah, we could screw with you. We know that. We could totally, we could make the bullets turn around, come back at you, and just make it the most frustrating game ever. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the possibility. You should, maybe, for maybe game. you could like make, yeah, you could completely just over exaggerate and be like, all right, if we really wanted to make it hard, here, this is what we would do. Like, Here's your right. nightmare mode. <laughs> yeah. Oh lord. So what we came, what we came up with was actually it wasn't wasn't that hard. Like, yeah, you give you the best control possible. You can see the hitbox. There's a screenshot that I happened to capture in one of my uh, recording sessions where uh, a boss exploded. And just for a, a one frame, like it's flashing the screen really bright. You don't even really notice it. But in the screen capture, you can see all the four player hitboxes still drawn on top of the screen flash. So you ne- there's never even a single frame you can't see your hitbox. That's really and, cool. Yeah. And the next thing that's drawn that is not covered by anything else is the bullet. So you, you may have noticed, like, even the enemy bullets will cover up the HUD and the score. Mm-hmm. And every, even the explosions, you know, like those shoot 'em up games where, like, you kill something and you expect it to be dead because it's blowing up, but there's a hidden bullet underneath that explosion that kills you. Stuff yeah. like that. We took all that stuff out, so there's none of that. It's basically the most, like, we give you full information, full control, how good are you at just dodging and aiming? And then, well, your ends up, people are pretty good at it. Like, people are pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> well, the only thing we do is take the dial of how much bullets are shot. We just keep turning it up. And, it, of course, it turns into what we call bullet hell. Uh, fundamentally, bullet hells are not, score rush is not a bullet hell. Uh, that's, the bullet hells, the true bullet hells are usually like Japanese creations. And they are like, they're, they're different breed of shoot 'em ups actually than what score rush is score rush is almost more like thunder force or, or ride and that's th- those are our inspirations made more intense uh where bullet hells tend to be more like the bullet patterns tend to be more beautiful more structured with like methodical solutions to it where uh what we are, what we make is more like uh manic like chaos just bullets all over the place figure out your path we didn't we didn't really think to try to make a path that you can escape just try to figure it out your place you just like it prop it there there's a there, it exists in there somewhere we're not going to sit and figure it out <laughs> yeah. but it's there like and then we play it and we if we find it that's good enough basically right. like, here's your pile of chaos now you go and sort through the make your order <laughs> yeah that's that's what it is. And the only reason it's a pile of chaos is because you actually lived 
far enough to get to the chaos because you you could survive everything up like the game just gets, keeps getting harder right so you you actually that's your challenge like you can the next player who couldn't get that far they have a previous challenge that you've already overcome so the game was kind of designed as if it was endless like you guys i don't know if you guys know if the game has an end or not but it's designed i'm not, not good enough to to get that far <laughs> no of yeah. course not <laughs> Wouldn't be a great thing if everybody beat the game. I still can't beat that stage eight boss. So you got to the boss where the music ch- changes and it flies around the screen. Is that I? God, I don't know. I think <laughs> you kind of know if you get to the final boss because the music tra- changes into more hype, and uh, it's the first time you even hear the song. So maybe you were at the stage seven. But wait, you got to all the power ups, right? Yeah. And did you? Did you get to a boss after that? I I got to a boss that was after that because that's where I ended up dying. When okay. when it said like the the game over and all the stats popped up, it gave me scores for everything but the stage eight boss. Okay. Okay. So I don't know if there if I died at the stage eight boss or if there was like a boss before the boss. Uh, probably was the stage eight boss because you would know if you died in the midst of just enemies. Um. I know What's Chris, Chris was watching. Can... I was just kind of like zoned in on the oh, game. Yeah. yeah, I think you can beat the game. I think you're close enough. The stage eight. You boss gotta believe in the heart to... of the cards. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, it messes with its patterns because it moves around and it distorts them as it shoots. It's pretty chaotic, actually. <laughs> I love it. I, it's it's such a good game. I really really enjoy it. I mean, like I really there's a lot of times this. that. <laughs> I, There's a lot of times, obviously, we'll get we'll get games in, and you know we'll we'll play through them. And realistically, I mean, like, I think if we weren't doing reviews or if we weren't like, you know, it, it's not something that I would actually go out of my way to attempt to try and like play on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. This is one of those games, though, because it is such a pure like. Even if even if you end up getting good enough to to be able to complete the game every time you sit down and play it. Because, like you said, the score is completely dependent on how good that you do. Um, there's incentive to constantly keep, you know, playing it over and over and over mm-hmm. and over and over again. So we put that's one thing scores. that I really enjoy about it too. We put your friend's scores right on the screen before you hit play. That's that was on purpose. So if I mean, so you unless know what you to aim for. Yeah. So if you have depends on if you have friends playing, or you can just show everybody's score. But you can click on a friends filter, which. Uh, and what we wanted was competition. We didn't necessarily want you to try to beat the highest scores in the world. I mean, it's hard to do that, but you can you can definitely challenge your friends' scores, though. Or even just cr- crawling up the leaderboards. I mean, let's be honest. That's all that really matters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's, nobody's ever trying to, like... Because you're just trying to beat your friends, so you could say that you're better than them. That's I'm yeah. so curious what my score is at right now, because when I, I was lucky enough to play it pre-release... I was, I think, ranked fourth in the world. Probably nowhere <laughs> near there. I'm, I'm probably like nine thousand right now. I'm just, something, I'm just, I'm kind of curious like to that. see how well I held up. Right. Probably or not if that you well. Held up at all? I didn't. <laughs> probably the latter. Yes. <laughs> and what's cool is that uh, I could talk about this. There's multi, so there's multiplayer, uh, obviously. And when you play, if you play with a friend, let's say two of you play. Um, that is a separate scoreboard. So you Ooh. don't, because what would happen is you can both kill these enemies quicker. So you can kind of extract more points out of them. If you kill, if two people are killing this boss, you can kill it twice as fast, but you get twice the points. That's the, that's the formula. It's, it's like if you kill it twice as fast, twice the points. Or, I mean, measured to the frame accuracy. So if you kill it one frame faster than somebody else, you get that mathematical exact amount of times faster than you killed it that many points. So this is a speedrunner's wet dream. Yeah. (laughs) Pretty much. (laughs) I'm I'm guessing that's a reason why there's no actual online play with this. Yeah. Online play is hard, too. And it would be hard to keep the... The lag would... would Oh, the sinking would be a nightmare. (laughs) Oh, my God, yeah. Honestly, this is... We developed uh, technology to make online play lagless no lag but it involved it is, <laughs> i'm gonna make this is funny but it's the closest uh, analogy i can use to it is multiple universe like quantum theory with multiple universes 
<laughs> so what happens is, <laughs> I don't know. I won't. I don't even bother. I won't even bother explaining it. What happens is that uh, the compute, the system, if it doesn't know what's happening on the other end because of lag, it has to just assume things. Uh, what if you killed the boss on your end and it's lagged out and I don't know yet? Then I get a message too late. Like, even if it's just a half a second too late, but I get that the boss is killed, does it just die on my screen even though nobody, sh what if I'm not shooting at it? And what if you're, you've stopped shooting at it? Like, it's just, it's a lag creates like cracks in the space time continuum of game. Totally <laughs> I like it. It just, br it breaks things. And it, in certain games, it doesn't matter. Certain games, it does. And it's, it's just really hard. So we'd have to like, you need to, and what some what some games do is pretty simple. They just say, uh, one system is the master system, and until the, the, you know you haven't died until you submit your location and all your information to the master system, and then it'll decide who dies. And you know it's like the god of all the. Let's say there's four of us playing, and I'm the master system. My the client system server system. model, yeah, yeah. But what happens there is that. You can't even, you actually have to, you lag out on your own screen based on waiting on this system. It's, that's why there's some games have tons of lag and others just don't. Some games just say, hell with it, I'm just going to move ahead anyway. Oh, and if I realize that you were update, like when you're, when you're playing, like, let's say when I used to play Unreal Tournaments, it never lagged out. Just the person on the screen would lag yeah. out. And did I, I don't know if I really wanted to do that with Score Rush. It's, it can, uh, can affect the scoring of the game and stuff like that too. It's so like trying it's, to anyway, it's hard. It's like trying to predict the future, but with network code. Yeah, <laughs> it's that it's, impossible. There's a reason <laughs> a lot times. of shoot 'em ups don't do it. Yeah, honestly, there are some that have, but there's a reason that a lot of them don't. Yeah, I can imagine that wouldn't be easy to make work flawlessly. Yeah. And, and obviously, so with a game like this, you need very precise you know, calculations for stuff to make sure that, like, you know, hitboxes are not being triggered or whatnot, so you can't really risk that kind of stuff with a with an online kind of uh, netcode. I like how At Chris went like from talking to us to being in, like, the middle of a, a grand opera hallway You can tell half he's of that. building what? the Ikea. Yeah. <laughs> I was next yeah. to a wall. I, I was, like... <laughs> I just want to know that Matthew, if you're the master system in that <laughs> game, can can I be the the engage? <laughs> <laughs> Is that like? Are you gonna start writing your own like Valentine's cards? Is that like? <laughs> you're the dreamcast to my heart. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, en en Engage port confirmed to be happening for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, listen. If you put out a copy on the Engage, I would immediately be on eBay trying to buy myself an Engage. <laughs> Virtual boy, let's do it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh my god. I'm I'm still gonna keep my fingers crossed for Xbox and Steam. Yeah, Xbox for me, Steam for you guys. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, either one. Would a, whatever one it ends up going on, I'm gonna Steam buy it. Like, I'm probably never getting an Xbox One. <laughs> well, you should. You you totally should actually. I love it. If you honestly, if you think of it more as like a, uh, like a, uh, all in all media device, like home entertainment, super center craziness. It's Which my awesome. computer already does, hooked up to a 46 inch television. But do you have a connect? Why? <laughs> because it's amazing. Until you, you, listen, until you use the new one, you won't understand. Yeah. Mm. Not even worth explaining it to people anymore. You just, you just yep. gotta see it. You, you have to see it, and you have to use it. Once you use it, you're gonna go, wow, this is, this actually makes a lot of sense. So, would you put connect commands in an Xbox One version of the game? No, I wouldn't. No. You you wouldn't make it so that you could just yell nuke and set off one of the nukes? No, it's just, that's how this doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> you want it to be a 1 60th of a second reaction. Uh, if you said nuke, just picture like, if you're saying nuke, so at the end sound of that, you want to nuke at how many frames go by before you finish even saying the word 
that it detects that you said it, reacts to it. True. Very yeah. true. Versus pressing a button, which is already too late for most people when they. <laughs> 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 I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that, and I respect that. Here's an idea that I thought of. So, a, like, let's say, like, a platformer like Mario or something. Have you guys ever run into the mechanic where, like, Okay, picture someone trying to run and make the biggest jump possible, but they run off the platform, they press the jump button too late, so that the character's already starting to fall, so the jump doesn't work. Yeah. Have you have you heard of the the mechanic that it actually lets you fall for a few seconds and the jump will still work? Is this I'm just curious, have you guys heard of this mechanic? Frame before? perfect mm-hmm. jump, yeah. Yeah. Uh like Braid has it. If you actually play Braid, Jonathan blows uh puzzle game there the time mm-hmm. yeah. yeah you can actually see the character like tim starting to fall for sure you can press jump and it's because he doesn't really care it's not a it's not a plat it's not about platforming skill so he just if someone's that bad at it he lets it happen theoretically you could have a bomb a nuke that even though you start to explode a few frames you press the nuke it actually like kind of warps you back as if you hadn't died you could theoretically code something like that in no one i've never heard of anybody ever doing it but that's an idea to give someone that sometimes it might only be a frame or two that they think they pressed it and they didn't you know and it could even be it could even be the fault of the new tvs that we have that are a little bit slower yeah the lag yeah yeah we're we're just getting back to this whole fucking with time thing (laughs) (laughs) I know it's complicated Space stuff, time. man. You, you could call it the pile of chaos engine. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Which, by the way, pile of chaos would be a great metal band name. <laughs> pile, pile of chaos. chaos. Chris, that's your next project. <laughs> pile of chaos? Yes. Pile. And it's just the <laughs> album. The album cover is just a picture of his new apartment right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right now. All the all the boxes and just yeah. everything everywhere. Pile of chaos. S- speaking of the music, uh, the music in this game is pretty fantastic. Oh, cool. Yeah. It's dragon music. That's actually what the the band the uh musician is called dragon music. Was it made specifically for the game or is it just licensed? Oh, it was made specifically for the game. Basically, I wouldn't want to take credit. Uh, Dragon Music made these songs, but if I took any credit at all, it was the guidance towards the style of music that I wanted him to make. So, what we wanted, so you've heard of like Mega Man covers, right? Like Mega Man, Dr. Wily's Castle, or something, someone covering it with a real guitar. Oh, yeah. Oh, a few. Yeah, yep. oh, yeah we. <laughs> We're we're kind of uh, familiar with that scene a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, we're I love very, that stuff. Like we're that's... we're very very involved. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what I was after, and one of the one of the most like famous YouTube videos of it, like back when it first happened, some guy with millions of views. I contacted that person uh, to make the music for this game. And the price was, well, the price is too high. I shouldn't even say what the price was. It's just, it was way too high. Uh, and this is kind of curious who it was because I wonder if we know them. (laughs) Yeah. I wouldn't know who it was now. I I can maybe research and figure out the video and find the email where I emailed them or something, but I don't remember who it was. This was for the 360 version and we weren't expecting it to make too much money anyway. Just, you know, it was on the indie channel and all that stuff. So. So what I did was, when you're a game developer, you get asked to do artwork. Uh, people want to do the artwork and like music a lot. They they e- like musicians will email you a lot, just kind of saying, "Hey, I'm out here. I make games. Usually like game music, and they usually have some of them have like ridiculous resumes, like doing games that I don't even know why they're even emailing me because they've done like insane game soundtracks. But somehow I get on this list. And anyway, so. I started contacting some of them and saying, hey, can you do something like this? Like this mega, I started showing off like Mega Man, usually it was Mega Man, but basically the idea was an NES style, the simplicity like of an NES style soundtrack covered with guitar. Like what people wanted at a score rush was actually heavy metal music. They liked, they liked the idea of us putting heavy metal music to this crazy shoot up rather than techno music, which is what we were I'm a metal guy, so I'm for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but heavy metal music actually doesn't work, and I shouldn't, 
I don't know if it actually doesn't work, but this is just my perspective and my opinion. I'm sure someone else can, can make it work. But a heavy metal song that we would play in the background would typically dominate the audio. I think that's the best way for me to explain it. It would just, there was no extra room for explosions and sound effects and all the craziness that happens in Score Rush. You, you actually need a song to take a back seat to that on some level. So, uh, so what worked it was actually like that mega, like the NES style music covered with real instruments. Uh, that's, it just, I thought it would work. I didn't know if it would or not. So Dragon Music basically was doing this orchestrated, like, uh, it wasn't really, it wasn't really even hard rocking music at all. He'd done all these other soundtracks and he could just pull this off like nothing. I just basically asked him to do it. He came up with some concepts and, and they just, it just, he knew exactly what we were, we were looking for. And just basically produced the soundtrack almost with no guidance whatsoever. And other musicians had tried at it, but it just wasn't, it just, they, for whatever reason, they just didn't really get exactly what we were going after. And so we we're like, I just, when I go, when I first heard his music, so at the time I was working with my brother Jason and I just sent him, I said, Hey, what do you think of this? And sent him the link. Cause I didn't want to say how much I liked it to, I didn't want to spoil like his perception <laughs> of it. So I said, Hey, what do you think of this? And he, when he wrote back that he loved it, I was like, yeah, I love it too. And we went with it. Nice. Um, yeah, it was good. Chris, you should do a, uh, a thrash metal alternate soundtrack for the uh, game alternate soundtrack for its engage release. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I'm That'd all about fun. that engage release. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day we're going to do an interview and actually convince them to do an engage port. <laughs> and we're going to be confused as fuck when we get like a free copy in the mail. It's just like you convinced us. Thank you. We just Crap, open it up and it's like, <laughs> oh, dude, I would I would be so excited. Either that or a Tiger R zone. Fuck yeah, man. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Listen, if you've never played a Tiger R zone, then you haven't lived. <laughs> I it, have, and that's why I'm laughing. It's got to be the real one with the, the headset and the <laughs> eyepiece. Not that yeah. handheld bullshit. That, no, not the handheld bullshit. You got to make it look like you're wearing a power scanner. <laughs> so is is the soundtrack available online anywhere for people to grab oh it is yeah it's on uh band camp i'm gonna look this up but i'm not sure it's on our the official scorers page <laughs> no no no. leave it in v vicky in the chat uh release for the coleco vision is more likely and you know <laughs> what i fucking love the coleco vision though <laughs> I was well, a Coleco boy really, growing up. Really gonna have a Coleco Vision? Oh shit! Like, <laughs> you delete the. I forgot. Twitch deletes links that you post. Uh, just post of, the Skype chat thing. Wonder if I just do this? Yeah. Hey, hey. hey. I modded him, so there's Woo! there's there the is. link. Now oh, it just... work now. Yeah. Now you now you can ban people in the room. Okay. So if you see if you see Res post in there, just fucking ban him right away. Just ban him. <laughs> Great. So since since Coleco was brought up, I might as well ask, uh, what are some of your favorite old school, like old old school shooters? <laughs> okay, so God, let me think. So I am a. I've played games since since Generation Two. So that would be like Atari twenty six hundred Coleco Vision, all that. So I've been around the industry, well, you know, as a gamer since then. Uh, we're, in, we're, we're from the same class, my friend. Our, our yeah. people. <laughs> so I didn't own one, though. My first system that I really owned, I mean, I, I owned a TI-994A, which would have been a competitor to a VIC-20 home computer. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and so Parsec was the best game on the TI-994A, and it was better than any game on the VIC-22. And I'm like... I know I could just, that's just, you could say that I'm biased, but if you could really rewind time and look at the technology. So Texas Instrument invented like some like of the speech, the sound, the speech synthesis. Mm. So they had like a girl speaking like in the game saying press fire to begin and all this stuff. And it had a pixel scrolling background. Like, so it was scrolling not just by character, you know what I mean by character, it was scrolling by pixel. So a pixelated background that was scrolling, uh, Anyway, 
and had lasers. I always wanted to put lasers in my shoot 'em ups, but I never had. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the game, you, you. and it wasn't really. It was. It was pretty amazing. I can't really explain it. It's it's a, one of those things I can't really explain the game. How it was amazing. You'd have you kind of had to be there in the time. Uh, so there was that, and then after that. I mean, there was a game on there called TI Invaders, which was like a Space Invaders, you know, it was knockoff of Space Invaders. Um, and it was better than, uh, <laughs> it was one of the best uh, Space Invaders clones that I've, that I've ever seen, actually, even now. It was really good. They actually made it into a game where, you know, the original Space Invaders, those three enemies, that's all there is. Those enemies never change. Uh, this game, when you beat the first level, those invaders would knock down one, and all of a sudden there'd be only one row of the bottom enemies, two row of the top. And you beat that level, they knock down again, and then uh, there's new enemies that keep coming on as you as you progress. So that those two games, Parsec and TI Invaders, and probably hardly anybody's played those two, which is unfortunate. But I, I was thinking yeah. something like Vanguard. <laughs> <laughs> I to look that up. <laughs> Can you hear me oh. type in here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. Type louder. Yeah. <laughs> it's that type, type harder. Type harder. <laughs> Was it loud? No, not really. No, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> no, it's all about them. <laughs> we literally would have wanted you to type louder because yes. it's funnier that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fan. Oh, I'm looking at uh, Vanguard, I think. Vanguard yeah. was my shit back then. I didn't know this game. Yeah. It's uh, originally arcade. I believe they released it as a PlayStation Mini on the PS3. Oh. And I think it's on, it might be Vita compatible as well. I fucking loved Vanguard. I, I haven't played it. <laughs> so, yes. You know what? The, I, might, I may have jumped back too far there. You're asking, like, really retro. But after that, I probably... It would have been like the 1942s. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like those type of shoot 'em ups. Good stuff. Maybe it was 1943, whatever, whichever one came out there. I think both of them came out. Yeah. Yeah. And they, would, they evolved too. Like at first they were kind of just endless. And they evolved to having like big bosses. Uh, and the bosses, like on one of them was like a stealth bomber. Uh, and as you would kill it, it would start to catch on fire. And that's what happens in Score Rush. That's from that game. That's where we, that's a throwback to that game. The, the fact that our bosses catch on fire. I, I noticed that. I liked how they would catch fire so you could get an idea of how damaged they are. Right. I really like that. It's a nice touch. One thing, that's one thing I could do is actually talk about all the throwbacks that are in the game. Some of my forget. Obviously, the dual play connected fighters. Uh, that's a that's Galaga or Galaga, depending on how you pronounce it. Mm-hmm. Um, ironically, the the dual stick control was not from Geometry Wars. People tend to think that Geometry Wars was the basis of this game, and we please tell me you're going to say Smash TV. No, it was it wasn't <laughs> any of this stuff actually. Aww. But it was. It's funny because it's like yeah, the neon colors and the multi-directional controls. So there's a sense that it started as a, an arena shooter, then it grew into a scrolling one, but it was always a scrolling one. And actually, it was more based off Raiden than anything. And then, uh, then we realized we could put more bullets if we just slow the bullet. Like before the bullets would shoot at you so fast, and you move so fast, it's a different game completely. Versus bullet, like, it's almost like bullet time. You slow the bullets down, make you move half the speed, make the bullets move half the speed, and all of a sudden you have a, it felt like more like a bullet hell game, and we really liked it. We liked it a lot, and we realized on a wide screen, it takes about, I don't know how many seconds, way too long to move from the left side of the screen to the right and vice versa. You just can't cover <laughs> the screen if you only shoot upwards, unless you rotate the screen. That's why most bullet hell games have the rotated screens. Yeah. So we needed the ability to fire sideways. And that's where that's basically where it came from. So the game existed before uh, multi-directional control. What um what caused what uh made you guys want to do the whole thing where the the screen extended? Is it just because of the four-player com- like co-op stuff and it just got too cramped? 
Oh, you mean th- the screen scrolls left and right? You mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was born out of Ra- Raiden and like Thunder Force is like Thunder Force Two did that up and down on the side scroll levels. The Raiden always did it left and right. It just makes it feel way. It just I don't know. It's just better than having like it. You get rid of the cramped feeling, I guess. There's more room to move. Uh, the four play, it actually, it actually would be better to not do that with four players, ironically, because you can, f- what happens is two guys on each side, or one gamer on the left side, one gamer on the right side, each trying to move away, and they and they know the screen can scroll either way, but they're blocking the scroll from happening. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so it's actually better. It, if we had never made the screen scroll, people would never have that expectation. They wouldn't fight and then potentially die. It's the one thing. We tried to make the game never be at fault for your death, uh, ever. Like any, if you guys could come up with a way that the game is at fault for the death, that would bother me and I and would be in the next game if I could remove that. And so there's certain things, there's all kinds of little things that are designed in this game. If you're close to any enemy, for example, like it doesn't matter how slow the bolts move, you have less time to react the closer you are to the enemy. So you could be shooting some boss or something, have a little enemy right next to you, just pops out a little shot and kills you. So that doesn't happen. There's a proximity range where enemies, if they're too close, especially like turrets on the ground, they don't shoot at you. Uh, so none of those deaths ever occur. They, they literally are removed from the game. Also, enemies off screen don't shoot at you. Like if they're too low, they won't shoot backward. You're so used to enemy bullets coming down at you and passing you from top to bottom. Imagine an enemy that comes too low and actually shoots from bottom up at you. Your brain actually, w- you can literally not see it. I mean, I don't know if that is literal or not, but you're, you, you're, you won't register it in your brain and you'll die. You won't even know what, where the bullet came from because it's such an odd occurrence. So when enemies are too low on the screen, they don't shoot at you. All these little, like, dis- these are things that game, like, shoot 'em up developers have learned over the years. It's a very mature genre, genre when you think of it this way. Um, and then, so anyway, fighting against the screen left and right is, I just, there's no way I could zoom out the screen, but then it's like, I didn't want to do that, zooming out on the screen. Like, that's, that was a potential solution. So that's. I kind of like the screen forcing, you know, it forces uh, the people playing together to work together. Like, yeah. if they want to go one direction or the other, if they're fighting against each other, they're going to die. That's right. And it was geared to be co-op too, so that's a good point. The game was, as you know, like all the scores yeah. on the left, on the left side are small. Those are individual scores, but it's the, they add up to equal your total score. So it's like a team score, you know? Like, that's really what, cool. I, yeah, it doesn't matter what Michael Jordan scores. <laughs> what score, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I do like the fact that you made it so that the game isn't at fault if you die. It, there's no cheap bullshit deaths to it. The game mm. is basically if you die, it's your own goddamn your fault. Own damn so fault. stop yep. bitching about it. Right. <laughs> yep. Fuck you. Get good. Yep. <laughs> Fuck you. Get good. Let's keep coming back to that. <laughs> this it is works. what happens. So, game death, death in games is the is a thing, like a, a very important thing, a point, a moment, whatever you call it, that has to be like solved when you create a game. Uh, it's the part where people give up. It's the part where people People will not call it, really think your game sucks, but when they die, they might think it sucks and then you shut it off. And you have to like avoid, it's like almost like a minefield. You have to avoid a death that feels so bad that people think they just blame the game. Anybody blaming the game for a death, automatically they think the game sucks. Like it's just, they don't want to deal with it. So what happens is you can have, the way I see it, you have two reactions. One is, Let's just say, let's just say you were playing the game. I made this enemy shoot a row of bullets that cover the whole screen just comes down at you and there's no gaps and you just die. Of course, you're going to die and then you're going to say, well, there's no way I could have got out of that. This game's and, bullshit. <laughs> right. There's no, but pretend that that happened somehow in the game when I didn't even mean for it to happen, but it happened like you were stuck in a corner. Or so I don't even know. Uh, there's just like, that is the feeling. So what you feel in that moment as the gamer is helpless. So you want to avoid that feeling at all costs. The exact opposite of what we're going for. What we're going for is to make you feel empowered. So empower the player. Is every, the whole game is based on empowerment of the player. So what we want you to do is kick as much ass as possible. We don't want you to be, 
we don't want you to be cowardly and running away. A lot of like arena shoot 'em ups, uh, like dual stick arena shoot 'em ups, you're usually running away from enemies and there's a feeling of like that you're just cowarding. Like that score rush is the exact opposite. It's about dominating. In fact, some bosses, when people cower too f much, they, they get their butt kicked until they realize, well, you know what? I can take this fight straight on and bring it right to the boss. And then they realize like it's, that's how you beat it. it you don't have to beat it that way, but it has, it caters to the domination of the aggressive dominating gameplay. Um, so that's what we did. So we wanted to avoid the helpless feeling. So when you die, I wish I could do this as a test, see what someone's feeling when they die in the game. And what we hope to, that you feel is that you think, okay, I died. It was my fault, but I totally could have got by that. If I try one more time, I'll get by it. You know, yep. that's what we're after. And then you feel empowered and you want to try again. You know, that score wasn't the highest score you could have done. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It, it's that's kind of like one thing that I noticed with it more than anything, because, like, uh, again, those are the types of games, like, bullet hells are the types of games, or at least, like, shooters are the types of games where it's like, if I feel like there's a cheap death or something like that, I'll just be like, eh, I know that I could have done better, but there's a cheap, shitty mechanic that made me die. It wasn't my fault, so fuck this game. <laughs> right. It's kind of almost like, this is a weird analogy, but it's like the doom of shooters. It wants you to get your ass in there and get it done. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And with friends, if you want, just like Doom used to be like back in the day. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like LAN, like four player LAN Doom was. Oh, amazing. hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, co op. That's what I like. I like playing with my friends against a common foe, not like against my friends. I so, agree. Yeah. That's it's... why when it's two, two player game, three or four or whatever, you get the same score. Because I didn't want even, let's say, two of you playing together. Then one of you gets a little bit higher score. It's like, no, I didn't, like, I want you guys playing together. And if someone gets a higher score, you, that adds to your score too. Like, so it's a team, it's a team effort. It's a team effort. Yeah. I like those kind of games. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the it scores post <laughs> to, the, the scores will post to teams your size and larger. So if you're a two player game, if you play a two player game, let's say you score a hundred million points. Uh, that'll post to the two player boards. It won't post to the one player. It wouldn't be fair because you're, you're two people. Yeah. But it will post to the three and four because theoretically your two player team might beat some three player efforts or four player efforts. So huh. They post upwards. That's even really a, cool. Even a single player might beat like a four player effort, for example. One good player better than four shitty players. Yeah. <laughs> I now kind of want the four of us to sit down and play this together sometime. Uh, <laughs> that would be great. That would be awesome. You would kick our asses out of yeah. it. <laughs> you would, well, you would carry us to it, greatness. He would, he would carry the team. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, that's what happens. Somebody can carry the team and there's revival built in. So the original score didn't have this. So I, I definitely have played it where I'm just good at the game because I played it, right? I just, I'm just i a gamer too, so I really like these games anyway. But I'll play where someone dies and they kill off all the lives. So the livestock are shared, the bombs are shared, everything is a team anyway. And then they just sit there watching me play the rest of the game, Doesn't it, and it's boring to sit there and wait. So we put revival in this game. So if anybody at all is alive for 10, like remains alive for 10 seconds, you come back on. Ooh, that's neat. Even even including your other self, if you're playing in dual player du dual play mode, so you can revive yourself theoretically indefinitely. It's it's uh it was tried and tested to make sure you can't abuse it. Uh, you have to <laughs> if you get to like someone can't just you, we want to make sure that revival wouldn't just let everybody just get to the end of the game. So the game actually handles it pretty well. That sometimes that 10 seconds is very hard to come by once you get deep into the game. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I really like that cool. mechanic. <laughs> that's that's a if, really good mechanic. Yeah, it just keeps everybody in the game. It's, it's great. Yeah. I think 10 seconds is a good time, too, because, like, you can easily get overwhelmed in 10 seconds, so... Right. And then what So happens, it's not like, like you said, like, you don't want somebody being able to abuse it, so... Yeah, exactly. We didn't, we tried, we tried sometimes like a minute, 30 seconds, and that was actually enough that people just wanted to, to like, picture Please. us as a, at a game conference. People just didn't want to keep playing. 
It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's like no, 10 seconds, man. And they just wait and they're hoping for the other person to, to stay alive. <laughs> and here's one Not thing that. I could talk about. When you die, let's say it's a two-player game and all the lives are lost and player one dies. Uh, and they had, let's say, 20 power-ups in them. Uh, so you lose half. Half are gone no matter what, so there's 10 remaining. They explode out of your ship. Uh, the reason we did that, because we wanted to... With shoot 'em up games, sometimes you don't realize where you came from until you finish the game, you start over, and you realize how weak you were at first. So we wanted to remind mm-hmm. you how weak you were every time you die, but still not take away all your firepower. So we'd explode them out on the screen. You come back on, you're very weak, but then you collect them all again. So it's like bonus time, you know, like it's all that stuff. People love collecting stuff. But it's not we weren't we weren't adding anything that was really breaking the game, it was just a showcase. It turned out that that, that mechanic worked for multiple like multiplayer so if there's two players playing the last guy one guy dies off and there's no lives his icons half of his power-ups float out and the remaining player can use them to help stay alive someone might somebody might say like hey don't eat up all my icons but maybe they need them to kill the boss or to be safe or whatever it is so they get the ultimate you can imagine like four players where everybody starts dying off like crazy and that final person gets all of their power-ups and now potentially gets some of those bullet clears too and it actually can help them get by that part. So and that's like awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, if you if you go to MAGFest next year in, <laughs> in what, January is it next year? January. Yeah. Uh, January, yeah. If, if you go to MAGFest, the four of us will have to sit down and play this game together. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure if you've ever been there or if you know what yeah. it is, but... I, the music and gaming festival. I've never been to it, so we're, we're all informed. very. <laughs> where yeah. is it? Yeah, we're, we're all very, very um, uh, involved. Yes, with yeah. Magfest. Okay. <laughs> it uh, is National Harbor, Maryland. Okay, so it's a hop, skip, and jump away from DC. Uh, what's really great is I'm closer to it now. Yeah, you are. <laughs> It's okay, no, Chris. You'll ne- you'll never match uh, Rez and I's record for attendance. Magfest oh, no, number jacks not. for life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be cool, yeah. But yeah, if you go to the next Magfest, we will have to get together and play that game, the four of us. Yeah, for sure. It's I don't know like coming it, to a right? gamer utopia, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> It is. That's cool too. Like until you go to the first one, you don't you don't really yeah. realize what you're missing. Yeah. It's because it, it, I really don't thing. do like I don't do a lot of other cons and stuff like that. Like I, I did a PAX once and it was cool, but like after you go to one Magfest, you're like, all right, I don't need anything else. Like, <laughs> oh, cool. yeah. I usually go to PAX East and GDC. Yeah, I went to PAX East, and, it, and don't get me wrong, it's cool. Um, but like, and I tell people this all the time, when I went to PAX East, it was literally like, all right, how much free shit can I get for the entire time that I'm here? <laughs> so that I can counteract the cost of how expensive the goddamn tickets were because I had to get them from a scalper because yeah. you know what I mean? like it's just it's a, it's such a big freaking hassle like yeah a, a magfest is just it's way more low key although it is growing really really freaking yeah. big yeah. um it still all manages to feel low key like in comparison to Pax East it's so. a, it's a party. It's not a convention, right? Yep. Cool. I mean, where else can you go at two a.m. in the morning down to the arcade just so you can rock out with your friends? <laughs> two a.m. Yeah. in the morning is very redundant. Yeah, because it's it does not <laughs> two stop. in the morning in the morning twenty four seven or twenty four hour nonstop. Yeah, yeah, good times. Anyway, well, I know yeah, we've he, been- this this last Magfest. What I was there for. 12 hours <laughs> if that <laughs> if that i showed up at like four o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning or something stupid <laughs> and it was still jumping <laughs> it was yep. yep and i still had a great time <laughs> <laughs> but anyway i know we've been chatting with you for about an hour and a half now we still have some other stuff to take care of i'm not sure if you wanted to stick around or if you wanted to get going um maybe i'll get going just i have some <laughs> other stuff to yep. do. <laughs> sounds good yeah. It, it was a blast chatting with you. Uh, I can't wait to see this come out. Uh, fingers crossed on Xbox, on Steam, and on the Engage. Uh, <laughs> it's it, 
It's just a fantastic game. I'm thrilled that you let us cover it. I'm thrilled that you came on to talk to us. I'm even more thrilled that you used us as quotes on your website. That's that's a really cool <laughs> honor for us. I, I like that. I know. It's just uh, it's cool that you guys just say what you're feeling, and that's that's the quotes I like are the are the, the, the emotional ones. You know, not like it has four player. It has you know. You guys are just speaking right from the heart. That's that's <laughs> we why we do cut. our yeah. that's why we do our show because we're just we're honest and casual and we're not yeah. we're not trying to impress anyone. If you like us, awesome, join the party. If you don't, well, fuck yourself. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's good. Pretty much. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys having me on, and I appreciate the review. Indeed, uh, I I know you probably can't confirm if it's coming to any other platforms, but if it's coming to the Xbox, let us know and uh, we'll get you back on to talk about it again. Okay, that sounds good. Appreciate right. that. Have a good one, Matthew. Yeah, thanks, Joe, and everyone else. Thank you. See ya. Good one. <laughs> yeah, see ya. Bye. Good chat. Good chat. Why? Yeah, why is really Skype asking game. me to rate the call? I'm not done with the call. <laughs> <laughs> It was how good. How good was that part? <laughs> it was excellent. I gave it an excellent rating. Good stuff. Okay, that's good. All right. <laughs> so, uh, a lot of news has happened oh, yeah. recently. Uh, uh, I've been moving, so give give me an, give me some uh, give me some info. I'm excited uh, to hear what's going on. The biggest news that I think we could lead off with is uh, they have detailed a lot of the uh, Xbox Summer Update information. Okay. Dun dun dun! And it's supposed to hit preview tonight. <laughs> uh, well, that doesn't help me because I won't have internet for a week. But tell me. <laughs> uh, first things first, Cortana is coming. Oh, <laughs> phrasing! <laughs> no, no, excellent phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> Cortana is going to give better and easier voice commands so no more accidentally saying the x word and fucking things up when you're yeah. not paying attention uh so instead of saying something like x word go to diablo 3 uh hey, reaper hey, of cortana. souls ultimate Eve edition uh you could just say hey cortana let's play diablo and it'll Sweet. work yeah. or hey cortana i want to play halo so no more bing midget porn <laughs> <laughs> some some of the the examples in the video where they were like hey cortana what was the marlin score last night and it pulled up on the side just like recent sports scores like like on the snap yeah oh that's sweet, i dude. i can't i can't wait to fuck around with this because you could just be like hey cortana what's the weather like and on the side i'll just pull up the weather huh so cortana oh, dude, is clearly awesome. one of the big things uh they are finally, finally redesigning the My Games and Apps section. Thank fucking Christ. Instead of horizontal scrolling, it will be vertical. Okay. They are going to have multiple tile sizes for the Thanks icons. fucking God. Uh, they are going to have A to Z alphabetical grouping, so you could just hit the trigger and jump from A to B to Z, C to D. Good. So, E nice update there. Uh, ready to install is going to have its own dedicated tab. Uh, duh. So instead of scrolling to the right for 20 minutes, you'll have just its own little area right there where it's going to be good. games, apps, Quality of life changes. ready to install in queue. And uh, your download queue is actually going to be on the homepage now next to the current app. Oh, okay. So, like, where it would have, like, some of the advertisements yep. and stuff, it would be over there. The top right, basically, they're removing the top right uh, advertising logo or block, and they're putting ready to install as well as my games and apps. So, you don't have to hit the trigger to go down to my games and apps anymore. Cool. Uh, they're in the queue. They're also going to show your download speeds, which is neat. Okay, that's good. Like being able to test your network, like on the yeah, fly. see how that's... fast things are going. Uh, cool. They're going to have, they're going to be unifying the Windows and the Xbox stores to make browsing easier, update the store a little bit better. Uh, they're making, you know, quality of life updates to the activity feed. They're adding the Facebook friend finder so you could find people. It just looks like That'll there's cool. going to be 
a ton of just good updates to make things easier and simpler. And this is only the first wave of stuff they're announcing. I I am thrilled to hopefully get that update hit my Xbox soon so I could fuck around with it. <laughs> but yeah, looks like uh, Xbox One is only getting bigger and better as the summer goes on. Sounds like it. Uh, I just n- need Skate 3. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Next bit of news that Patient I have wait. here is uh, this week's Rock Band DLC is pretty great. Ooh, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, well, it's not necessarily for you, but it's some good stuff. Uh, first is Blues Traveler's Hook. Oh, boy. I like that song. <laughs> and I, the, would, I would buy that song. The harmonica solo is charted to guitar. Oh, uh, even better. <laughs> <laughs> and then even my fucking better. My Chemical Romance Famous Last Words, hmm. which I'm excited about one? because I, I fucking I, love not, that song. I'm not uh, uh, like I'm not a hundred percent on their material, so. It's it's a good one. It's one of my okay. favorites off the Black Parade. Uh, they also announced the rest of the artists for the month being Goo Goo Dolls, Imagine Dragons, The Killers, Magic, Toto, and Three Days Grace. So Toto and uh, start from the beginning again. <laughs> uh, let's see. Span of a nap. Oh, uh, hold on. Hold on. Uh, the Killers was that one of them? Goo Goo Dolls. Imagine Dragons, The Killers, okay, Magic, Three Days Grace, and Toto. So yeah, so Toto and um, and uh, The Killers would be the only ones that I'm interested in. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get fucking Goo Goo Dolls. No. What if it's Slide or Iris? Uh, that, you mean the Slide, the one that I play every fucking week? Exactly. Nope. <laughs> e- Eternal Rage is uh, in the chat room trying to remind me that uh, Cortana is going to work with headsets and not just the Connect. But fuck that, you need a Connect. Buy a Connect. It's listen, awesome. Listen, the fact that it will work Buy with a connect. headset is a welcomed addition. Indeed. Uh, you still cannot turn the system on without a Connect. Well, duh. Like, you still need Xbox on with the Connect to turn it on. You can't, hey, Cortana, turn on. That's not going to work. <laughs> sure. So. That would make sense. So buy a Connect. Don't be dumb. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be <laughs> even cheaper soon. Uh, some PlayStation news. Horizon Zero Dawn, one of the, the games that I am stupidly excited for on PlayStation 4, has been delayed to February 28th, 2017. Uh... I'm sure it'll get another delay or two because it's going to be good and uh, they better not fuck it up. <laughs> they re- they released the new trailer and it looks incredible. People ask me like why ha- why do you still have a PlayStation 4 after all the headaches that you have? And it's games like that. <laughs> and Fair. and also confirmed for the PlayStation 4 in 2017 Final Fantasy 12 HD re-release. Is that your MMO one that you're crazy about? No. Final Fantasy XII is the one on PlayStation 2 that everyone kind of ignored. But it's fucking incredible. Uh, is that the one with Blitzball or whatever? Or no, that that's Final Fantasy X. Listen, I'm not a fan of Final Fantasy guy. Mm-hmm. I'm not... It's... Final, when, when people talk about, oh, Final Fantasy X was so good and Final Fantasy XIII was so good and people, and other people are like, oh, there hasn't been a good Final Fantasy since Final Fantasy VI or Final Fantasy VII. I'm one of those people. (laughs) I'm one of the guys who said that pretty much all the current Final Fantasies have sucked except for Final Fantasy XII. Final Fantasy XII was from the, the director of Vagrant Story. So it's a lot more mature. It's a lot more gritty it's just good it is i am thrilled that it's coming it is officially called Final fantasy 12 the zodiac age it is going to be a re-release of the international version of Final fantasy 12 that only came out in japan it had an international zodiac job system which they basically added an entire new job system to the game to make it more huh just more in-depth and more customizable. There's going to be new modes after you beat the game. 
There's a weak playthrough where you get no level ups. There is a strong playthrough where you start at level 90. What the hell's clicking? Sorry, that was me. What the <laughs> fuck are you doing? I, I was trying to turn the volume down on my headset, but it wasn't working. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a weak, a weak game, a strong game. There's going to be a trial mode that has like a hundred stages of battles. That That's unlocked at the start. Just general game changes and improvements. Uh, the Final Fantasy XII, the, the PS4 version, is going to have shorter load times, uh, 7.1 surround sound, sure hope so. auto save, <laughs> sped up battles to make it go quicker. I'm just, I'm excited. Hmm. Another one of those things where people ask, oh, why do you stick with the PlayStation? Shit like that is why I still have one. Well, hmm. I hope you're happy. I am. <laughs> so, that's that's what I have for news. I could tell I'm the only one who gives a shit about Final Fantasy twelve. Yep. On the uh, show. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you can't even pretend. Nope. Nope. Fucking <laughs> a- assholes. Um or yeah, just I mean, keeping it real. The, yeah, obviously with the move I haven't been able to like check out anything and, and, and keep up with any news. So, right, well, Rez, do you have us. any news to talk about? Uh, or are yeah, we just... I got some modding news. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, uh, let's hear it. To, uh, we'll go back to Fallout 4 again. Uh, so, yeah, we have mods on Xbox One, and it is already turned into an absolute shit show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, basically, what's going on is... Uh, uh, modders that have been uploading mods for PC and have had them on for a long time, uh, they're getting harassed on both the Bethesda forums and even social media because people can't understand that uh, mods, some mods just cannot work on a console. Uh, so if they bitch and whine and harass them, and now it's gotten to the point when they don't get their way, they just outright steal the mod and upload it anyway. Nice, nice. Uh, one of them was so bad that it c- was corrupting people's saves as <laughs> if you played with it. <laughs> um, uh, the modders are being threatened to make their mods exclusive to one console. Um, <laughs> some people are even going so far as uh, this is targeted harassment for a, quote, struggle for equality on par with the civil rights movements, but for console versus PC. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Fucking serious? Come on. I'm like dead serious. Oh my god, I hate people. <laughs> oh. Um the, the people are saying it's just checking a box. Why are you being so PC elitist? Uh technical explanations are just completely wasted on them and they're convinced you're hiding the good mods for them on console. Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, wow. People are bashing Bethesda because these mods are crashing their games on console and deleting their saves, even though it says right as you sign up, we're not responsible for these. Exactly. And people are, oh my god. And this is why probably P- why <laughs> mods haven't come to consoles for a long while. The The amount of people who think that mods are just like free DLC blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah. They just think it's oh well free content and they're it's everything's gonna be magical and they're going to triple the graphics and gonna let me do this and do no. <laughs> Fucking I, I no. like this one quote is this uh oh it looks like the console peasants are rebelling. It's time I guess it's time to get the PC Inquisition. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there there's a lot of time like I hate the whole PC Master Race bullshit. But stuff like this is why the PC Master Race exists. Yeah. And why console people are referred to as peasants. Because there's just fucking idiots out there who don't understand shit. Yeah. I'm ridiculous. Making it bad for everybody. The, the What makes it worse is the only check they have in place is uh, people can just report the mod as being... A ripoff Faulty. or something. Yeah, they yeah. they have no system in check to check to see if this mod has already been on PC or what have you. It's right. <sighs> Bethesda needs to get their act together and act quick. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. And gotta love it. 
Yep. Dumb I'd misses. love it. So anything else, or should we jump on to the reviews of the week? Um. Yeah, I guess just move on to nah, reviews. I got nothing else. <laughs> All right, uh, reviews for the week. The The first one to talk about is called Color Symphony 2. It is developed and published by Rememory, a uh, South Korean developer. Releases June 8th for $9.99 on the Xbox One, possibly other platforms. I believe it is already out on the Wii U. This is a platformer, speedrunning platformer, uh, with the main gimmick being... That the world is divided into like three distinct colors, and you have to switch between the colors using the face buttons on the controller to make platforms appear or disappear, or also hazards like walls of spikes. <clears throat> it is incredibly unique. It is incredibly difficult. Uh <laughs> It's it's a blast though. It's really cool that that you have to basically learn this muscle memory of jumping and changing a color and then once you get past where that item was, reactivate it so like uh, you could land on a platform or wall jump off of something. It is huh. incredibly complex and really 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 fun. It's, what three colors do they use? It uses red, blue, and yellow. Huh. Okay. So the primaries. Yeah. Yeah. Like you'll, and of course it's tied to the B button for red, the X button for blue, and the Y button for yellow, obviously. Okay. And like some of them are like you're, you start the stage in a box and you have to jump and hit the button to change the background to whatever color that was. So that that item just disappears in the background. Huh. And then get to where you need to be and switch the background color so that that other item pops back out. Ooh. It's, it is, it is really interesting and really cool. It's actually, apparently they released another color symphony. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it was a PC only kind of thing or what, but it, it's a cool, cool game. It is difficult. It is very, very difficult. <laughs> there so you're are you got your ass handed to you. Very much so. Very much so. And that is not the only game this week that has kicked my ass. But <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm giving this one a try. It mainly because the difficulty will scare a lot of people away. But if you're a masochist and you like to <laughs> to play super hard games, and hey, we've had a listener. Win a couple of hard games from us. He's he's gonna yeah. dig this one. Hmm. It's it's really really cool. Uh, next game to talk about is called In Between, developed by Gently Mad Games, published by Head Up Games. Releases June eighth for eleven ninety nine on the Xbox One. This is uh, more of a narrative driven game. It's I, I don't want to get into the story because it's a very personal story and dealing okay. with personal struggles and uh, just life events. And playing through the game is kind of like coming to terms with and coping with that. The actual gameplay comes down to uh, gravity-based puzzles hmm. where you use the right anal or the left analog stick moves you, obviously. The left analog stick changes the gravity. You mean the right so, stick? Yeah, the right stick. I, <laughs> I, I don't know left and right anymore. I give up. <laughs> so if you hit right on the analog stick, your character goes flying up. And the top of the screen becomes the bottom. You hit left, right. Clearly, you go left and right. Huh. Starts off easy enough with just, like, get to the exit. And then they throw in, like, spiked walls and obstacles. And you... It comes down to where you have to switch gravity one way, position yourself, and then switch it while moving in directions to make Ooh. these jumps and these switches. It's it's a really, really interesting game. Uh, the art style is, is going to be hit or miss to some people. I, I think the characters are kind of eh, 
but the the actual environments to the game are really cool. It's a it, very cartoonish, hand drawn style for the characters, which I kind of wish there was something more uh, realistic looking, given okay. the the heavy themes of the game. Mm. But overall, um, it's another try. It it's a really cool game. It's not going to be a, a long experience. You could probably get through it in like three or four hours. Uh, comes down to how good you can solve the puzzles, I guess. Mm. But it's it's really cool stuff. Editing? Yeah. No. Yeah, crazy. that No one heard that edit right there. But anyway, the next game to talk about is called Soul Axiom, developed and published by Wales Interactive, released June 8th. So it is out already. Uh, yeah, it's today's the 10th. Clearly today's the 10th, and I'm not looking this up on Monday. Uh, released June 8th for 1999. Uh, this was released previously on, I want to say, PC, and uh, I don't know what else. And stuff. Uh, and stuff and things. Available on Steam. Uh, it's coming, I believe, this week to PS4 and Xbox One. It is also going to be coming to the Wii U. This Tiger is Arzone. a... Yeah, Tiger R Zone, the N Gage Virtual yeah. Boy. Uh, this is a first person story driven adventure puzzle game. Okay. So like Mist? That's what I was about to say. Uh it I get a I get a very portally vibe out of it, actually. Oh really? Okay. Uh you are uh Going to the digital afterlife, if that makes sense. Like the okay. story is very, very vague when you start the game and you're basically journeying to the afterlife, but you are digital. So you are no longer human. You have to figure out how you can be immortal in the afterlife in, in the world of Alicia. Uh, you gain various powers in the game, uh, powers where you can, uh, make things phase in and out, or you can, uh, corrode things like corrupt them and rebuild them. You can move objects and freeze them in place. And it's all puzzle based where, you know, you, you get through an area, solve the puzzles, learn the story, keep moving on. There's no no combat in the game so it's very much just a puzzle game okay so you're not you're not fighting things uh okay. visually the game is i love the visuals uh some people might not think it's the most advanced visuals out there but it's very stylized uh some of the areas give off like a tron vibe which is really cool i actually took a screenshot in the one underground cave looking area and i have that as my xbox background right now it's it's nice. Really, really cool stuff. Uh, the cutscenes in the game are, it's a drastic difference. Like the cutscenes are, are low res. It, it, I don't know if they were just old cutscenes and they were heavily compressed or what, but they stick out. Uh, gameplay. It's, it's a puzzle game. It is awesome. It is and not for everyone. You, you need to be. Like, there's not hard puzzles in the game. There's just a lot of, uh, God, I can't think of the word. Just some, there's a sense of tedium to some of the puzzles where instead of making you think, it's just like, oh, I got to do this and do this and do this. And I fucked up. So I got to start over. So let me do this and do this and do this. Uh, there are a lot of secrets in the game, a lot of hidden stuff, a lot of collectibles. So it'll keep you going through. I kind of wish there was like a chapter select or a way to revisit some of the old areas because I missed stuff early. And because I was okay. still early enough in the game, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll just start over because I wasn't that far in to get back where I was. But I just I wish you could manually like retrace your steps or get back in there. Uh, the game does have multiple endings. So there's reason to play through multiple times. Uh, you could, you could probably get a good, like, 10, 15, 20 hours of gameplay out of it, depending on, uh, how your adeptness to puzzles. Yeah. Yeah. That and whether or not you're a cheating whore who needs to use a guide. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so fair. I know some of the reviews initially weren't the kindest to it. But I, I really Shocking. dig the game. I, 
Like, I know Destructoid like shit all over the game, but well, I, I lost a lot of respect for Destructoid over the years, so yep. I, I dig the game. I enjoy it. I'm going to give it a try it just because uh, it's not going to be for everyone. A lot of people might be scared off by the $20 price. Uh, for the 20 bucks on Xbox... And I'm not sure what they what they have on PlayStation, but I know the Xbox One exclusives include a brand new chapter to the game. So that's like an extra hour or two of gameplay and an 82 page digital art book, Ooh, which it's it's well, neat to see cool. people toss in digital bonuses like that. So that's that's pretty cool. But yeah, Wait, I so did. Hold on. So if you're getting it, where do you just do they just email you a link? It's in the game. Oh, it's just ah. in the, oh, yeah. It's oh, just and one neat. of the options in the menu is just art book, and you just go in and you look at the the different visuals and concept art and shit like that. Just a fun bonus. Yeah, I like cool. That. So I I dig it. I dig the game. Cool stuff. Uh, yeah, try it. Give it a go, or watch someone play it if you're not good at that stuff. It's worth checking out for the visuals alone. Some of the some of the areas in the game are just awesome to look at. It's hmm. beautiful stuff. Beautiful, stylish, good stuff. Uh, final game. No, wait, no. Re- re-edit. Next game to talk about, which is clearly not the final one, and I didn't edit anything, uh, is called Phoenix Furia. This one is developed and published by Green Lava Studios. Uh, released June 8th. I don't have the price on this one. I should have probably got that before we started, but I'm... <laughs> seventy dollars, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. one it's, million dollars. It's somewhere between. I'm. I'm gonna guess like fifteen bucks, maybe twelve to fifteen. I don't know. Maybe ten. It could be ten. It could be twenty. I don't know. Could <laughs> be. That? Could be a hundred. I wonder if should I just? I'll Google this shit you right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Phoenix Furia. <laughs> because I'm. I'm so fucking prepared. <laughs> <laughs> if it's one Joe prepared is like your middle name. Uh, seriously, I mean, I fucking run this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am like the everything. I think fifteen bucks, fourteen ninety nine. Okay, oh cool. look at that. So there we go. There that we was, go. Wow, Joe, you were really you were on the mark, dude. Man. I'm so prepared. I'm always yeah, prepared. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, like fucking. What do you want? I'm I'm the god of everything here. You're but just anyway, exceptionally prepared. <laughs> <laughs> Phoenix Furia, Furia uh, formerly known as Phoenix Rage, they changed the name on it. It is another speed running 2D platformer uh, that is going to destroy your soul. <laughs> cool. I'm interested. I All right. I don't know how else to put it. It is going to destroy you. It is going to make you cry. It is going to brutalize you. You are going to die Sounds a lot. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Like electronic super joy plus super meat boy levels of death in this game. Oh man. Oh, I'm man. Not excited. And yeah. on top of that, it's a speed running game. Oh boy. Nice. So you need to journey through an area as quick as you can and not die. If you die, you immediately start over. So it's not like there's lives, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, because you're because you're going to die. You will die. You're not going to beat so, this game so if and you're not the die. Type of gamer that gets frustrated when you die. Don't play this game. <laughs> you know, you know, games are serious when they have like die ten times. Oh yeah, that's going to be brutal. It's like die a hundred times. Oh yeah, that'll be tough. Die five hundred times. There's a fucking achievement to die ten thousand times. <laughs> ten. Ten thousand. Damn. <laughs> I want to play this. <laughs> it is. Ten it is just thousand times. <laughs> just, just think about that for a second. Think about that. Let that think process th- in your brain. How many times you need to die? It's super masochism. <laughs> it's great. And <laughs> it this way, you're, you're going to be thousand. dying so fast <laughs> that you're going to rack up enough to get up to ten thousand deaths. Yeah. There, there was one achievement that I was like, oh, man, I'm going to have to work for this one that was die a hundred times in one level. <laughs> I think the one stage it? I had 200 deaths in one level. Damn. 
It's okay. it is just And you were is, trying on that one? I was trying. <laughs> I was just dying that much. Oh. It's it is oh my god, it is but it's fun. It's got That's awesome. it, it's got the feel of a super me boy where you just you want to keep trying until you get it. Mm-hmm. And there's you know, there's a collectible in every stage, there's a cookie in every stage that you can collect. Uh, they took a page from iDarb, or iDarb took a page from them, where if you collect all the cookies in a world, you get a cookie recipe. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Unlocked yes. in the game. There need to be more recipes in gaming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, there are multiple difficulty levels in the game. There's casual where, you know, you just got to survive to the end, which not bad. Uh, that makes sense. normal. You got to survive plus your time. Uh, that's where you got to beat the time. And if you beat ah. the times, you get a gold star. <laughs> and if you collect gold stars, you can unlock various arcade games that you can play. And I think I unlocked one so far because I, I'm just struggling that much with getting some of these times. Damn. Mm-hmm. Some of the stages also have red cubes that you could collect. That they're kind of like the warp zones in Super Meat Boy, where it just unlocks like a retro okay, stage or just cool a whole new area to check out. Oh, there cool. is a veritable shit ton of content in this game. Cool. And it will kick your ass the entire time, and you're going to enjoy it. And you'll come back and keep playing it, because you don't want this game to beat you. But it will. I, I for cool. one, am glad that we have this resurgence of hard games. Yeah, me like, too. It's, I mean, let's be honest. We've had our hands held long enough in gaming. Yep. <laughs> let's get back to the nitty gritty. <laughs> let's get back some... to get good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you. Get good. Uh, I'm I'm giving let's this make, one a buy. Let's make video games great again. I... <laughs> My 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 verdict is I'm giving this one a buy it just because you need to. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. That's the best review I've ever heard in my entire it's, life. It's difficult. Why should I buy this game? Because you have to. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I know hey, I know the difficulty is going to more blatant than that. Like, yep. I know the difficulty is going to turn a lot of people off, but I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Let yeah. it bother you. For me, I think that's one of the perks to the game. So I give it a buy. Well, it. Let's be honest. Like that's like, you know, it, it, sometimes in certain games, that's the me- that's a mechanic. Like that's yep. just how you learn how to play the game. So yeah, so, like so, some people need to just realize that like in certain games, in certain situations, like dying is not a bad thing. It's a learning process. Oh, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of stages in this game where you will be cursing the game and saying, fuck this game, fuck this piece of shit, bullshit game, fuck you, As you fuck who made this, it. and yeah. you'll keep playing it. Yep. <laughs> Those are the best kind. The so best. yeah, yeah, give that one a buy it. Cool. And our last game for the week is called uh, Grim Legends, The Forsaken Bride, developed and published by Artifacts Mundi who are some of our favorite people to talk about on this show. It releases yep. June 10th for nine ninety nine. We have covered, I believe, three previous Artifact games on the show, and it's, it's more of the same. It is a hidden object puzzle adventure game where you're going to have to find objects hidden in scenes and then use those to solve puzzles and go from area to area solving puzzles and doing this. Uh... I think this might be one of the later games that they've released on PC because there's a lot of stuff in this game that we've missed in others, like fast travel, <laughs> which, thank fucking God, you could Ooh. open the map and just pick an area where it's like, oh, there's shit to do here. Let me just go here. So that automatically gets a oh, thumbs that's up. Cool. <laughs> Uh, visually, this is probably one of the prettier games that they've released, like... Uh, I know Nightmares from the Deep was a very dark and gloomy looking game. This game is more fantastical. So there's like a lot of bright purples and greens and blue. It's just a very colorful game, which I like. Okay. Mm. It's, it sets it apart from the others where it's, it's very pretty to look at. Uh, 
it doesn't seem like there's as many hidden object scenes in this game, and the ones that are there aren't the traditional, like, here's a list of items, find them. Uh, there's been a lot more of the ones where it's like, here's pictures of items, now find them. Hmm. Oh, and okay. Punk is on the TV stand, so give me one second to throw something at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, speaking of cats, the game has a cat button. What? I cat shit button. you not, the game has a cat button. Uh, was it Clockwork Tales, where you have, like, a mechanical bird? That uh, I don't remember. One, one of them, it has, like, a mechanical bird that where in certain situations you have to use the bird to, like, retrieve an item or scare something away. Yeah. The game has a cat button. It's a cat You have a little kitten... That tails along with you, and in certain s- circumstances, like, oh, there's a key, but you need to scare away these rats. Kitty, go scare away the ra- There's a fucking cat button. <laughs> there's a cat button. Wow. What else well, do you I need mean, to say? Obviously, for you, in a house of seven cats, <laughs> I think you're a little biased towards the cat yeah, button. Yeah, slightly. Fuck you! You don't know me. <laughs> Actually, you you do know me. So yeah. I do know you. Yeah, you very well. much know. Me. Uh, <laughs> e- even ignoring the cat button, it's another artifacts game, and it's it just buy it. If you don't own yeah, the what, artifacts like, games, just fucking buy them. They're I, I, they're always good. Even if you're not like a hardcore puzzle person, like the artifacts games, like I'm not a huge puzzle person, but I like playing puzzle per a little bit puzzle games once in a while as like a palate cleanser so to speak <laughs> like you know what i mean like yeah. you, there's only so many times that you could just like play first person shooters and rpgs and all this kind of stuff like you just need something different yeah this is a good something different to grab for yourself you know it really I mean? is and it, you know you're if you've played them before you know what you're getting into it's going to be another six to eight hours of fun hidden object puzzles frustrating weird puzzles uh just adventuring around a campy story, weird cinematics, but it's just fun. They're always fun. So yeah, I, I think we could just automatically say every artifacts game is going to be a buy it, but yeah, you know, we'll, we'll still be fair to it. It's just, it's fun. And I'm not just saying that because of the cat button. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> it I helps. think he's kind of, I think he's saying it because of the cat button. Yeah, I think so. I'm saying Which, it because of the cat button. But you know button. what? But you know what? That's a valid reason. Yeah. yeah. Fucking cat, like button. cat button. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, another buy it. It's just good stuff. So, props to Artifacts. Keep bringing them. Pre- keep, keep them coming to the Xbox. We will cover every single one because they are always good. Truth. But, yeah. yeah that I've that about every single one. That about covers everything for the week. Uh, I don't know. Anything else you guys want to discuss or talk about? or? Um... There is a, there's a, a tiny little announcement that I ended up uh, getting on my phone in an email. Um, Let's hear it. Uh, apparently, APB Reloaded is actually coming to the Xbox One. It's already out. Really? Yes. It came yeah. out. Playing that game. That it game came- was fun. <laughs> it's it's cool. Like it's I, I played it for a little while on PC. Um, I, I think. I think the Xbox One's actually a pretty good platform for that game to be on. So I, I'm I'm curious the, to actually revisit it. The so. the early which version of the game did you play? APB Reloaded. Um, reloaded. Was, it, was yeah. it was it like it the was original just, or was it the free to play version? I started with the free to play. No, yeah, yeah. I started right when it changed to free to play. Because this is the free to play version. Okay. Where there's shitloads of microtransactions. Uh-huh. The early word is that it's a shit show. Really? I wouldn't be surprised. I, I've i downloaded it. I haven't had time to play it myself yet. I know it initially came out as like a soft launch. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. I saw in the email that it was do- like a quote unquote soft launch. Thing, and, so. and it was getting brutalized. And they like Damn. took it down for like two days. Oh, it is wow. it okay. is up and available now. 
Uh, again, I haven't played it myself. We know that we like focusing on the positive stuff in games, so maybe we could give this game a, a try and talk about it on a future episode. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll revisit it once um once like some of the kinks get worked out. Yeah. And, um, again, it's a free download, so it can't yeah, hurt to game. give it a go. Yeah. Um, but I, I wouldn't get your hopes thing, too the high. The thing that I could possibly think of uh, talking about is, um, I mean, Joe, I know I'm, I'm no, <laughs> I know you're probably just playing a bunch of games to review, but uh, you know what? What are you guys playing? I'm playing, uh, I'm playing shit a lot to review. Robocraft still. Um, they just had a new big update with uh, a new true team team deathmatch mode, and it's good. I just, I love Robocraft. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm uh, I'm playing Joe? shit to review. Uh, I'm actually after this week, we don't really have much else to to cover. It's going to be hitting that slow time of year. Cool, but uh, well, I mean, you know, we'll I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about after E3. And, oh God, yeah. Oh, next yeah. next week is going to be a fucking monster on the show. Ugh. Yeah, and it's my birthday. Yeah. Uh, it's looking like we might have another two episodes next week. So the week after E3 is looking to be 200. Uh oh. Ooh. Yeah. That's so. Uh, <laughs> this shit could be could be pretty cool. As long as you don't record it while I'm at Magstock. <laughs> <laughs> When's Magstock? 17th through the 19th. No, it'll probably be like the 21st, 22nd, something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I during my recovery period. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so you'll probably still be drunk, so we won't call you for that one. Nah, <laughs> like I actually have. She'll be not detoxing. really drank. I haven't really drank that much lately. Like, just I don't know. We we've done the whole drunk res on our show before. Yeah, that was, that was yeah. scary. It's hilarious, kind of. Um, <laughs> I have been um, because of the move. Um, and me not having internet, um, I have had to, re- <laughs> I have had to, I have had to resort to some of my offline Steam games. Um, so I, I played some Super Meat Boy. Nice. Um, I was getting through some hell stages. Um, I played some Street Fighter, some Super Street Fighter with, uh, one of my new roommates. Um, and that was fun. That was cool. Uh, what else did I play? Some Trials Fusion? Um. You need to get into Fa Haba. Fa Haba. Fa Haba. Chowda. Well, you could use your charge cad. <laughs> I'm going to be in Boston this weekend. So. Are you? Nice. Yeah, I'll be in Boston on Saturday. Nice. And then literally on Saturday, like that, that night at midnight is when it turns to my birthday. So, uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Don't get frozen. <laughs> Don't get naked. <laughs> naked. <laughs> naked and bastin. Okay. Oh my God. Uh, well, I, I mean, we'll, we'll see. I'll probably try and, um, try and see if I can explore a little bit and, and, uh, have some some birthday fun up in Bastion. Nice. Well, you have fun with that. Uh, yep. I guess we could wrap up the show. I'm gonna try uh, grabbing that Score Rush extended soundtrack and playing that for the music this week or this cool. episode, not this week because we're <laughs> we already we had a show one. this week because yeah. we're totally not recording out of order or anything. But <laughs> no, we never do that. Never, never. <laughs> this is a great Friday, isn't it, guys? Oh, having a awesome. having an awesome Friday. Time to kick back. It's such a good Friday that I'm missing Monday Night Raw right now. (laughs) 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 So uh, on that note, anybody got final words? I got final words are um, pick up Score Rush if you got a PS4. It's a good game. My final words: get naked and (laughs) bastin. Get naked naked and (laughs) bastin. All right, and that's the end of the show. So uh, we're going to kill the stream now. It has been a pleasure having you guys join us and watch the stream. Uh, we still have to cover two more games that we cannot talk about right now because of the the wonderful world of embargoes. But thank you for watching the stream. Uh, check us out. We will be doing this again. At least I will. I'm not sure. Chris, you have a show. 
Rez, I don't know if you'll be joining tomorrow or not. Yeah, but, uh, I have a show tomorrow, but aside from that, as long as we're recording on like, you know, Mondays and Tuesdays, it should be good. So Yeah, I we will be doing an interview at eight PM Eastern tomorrow with the guys behind Life Goes On on the PlayStation Four. And you can guarantee be guaranteed that we will be asking them about an Xbox release as well, because that's what we do on this show. That's exactly what we do. Uh next week we are looking to do possible Monday show. Uh, with the guys behind the Steam World Dig and Steam World Heist games on Monday, possibly. And then on Wednesday, I'm sure we will be doing an E3 spectacular. Yep. So, uh, on Red Dead Redemption. If you're, if you're still in the chat, cause I see the viewer numbers dropping, uh, if you're still there, feel free to check us out again, uh, the rest of this week and next. And thanks for watching. Woo! 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 <laughs> <laughs>